Welcome to Cavs TV on Cavs.com. Thanks for clicking on as we get you set for the NBA Finals. Of course, now we can say this week, uh, along with Joe Gabriel and Jim Jones. And let's start with Kevin Love because we have not heard from Kevin, but uh, seemed to be really uh, at peace with where he is right now. He dearly loved to be on the floor and be with the guys, but but I I felt really good hearing him and the excitement in his voice about how proud he is of this team. Yeah, I mean, you could tell that he really, you know, he's still engaged with the team. They're keeping him engaged. They talked about Tristan kind of texting him throughout the, the postseason. So, you know, it's good that he hasn't kind of drifted out into orbit, that they've kept him real tight and he's still with, uh, with the squad. Yeah, well, you know, Kevin is an intricate part of what we, we're, we're trying to do. And uh, I would feel a little more comfortable at nights if I knew he was with us. But, but he is, the team has made a, an incredible adjustment because the loss of 10 rebounds and 17 points a game is quite a bit from an all-star type player. Kevin, though, surely uh, has uh, had a lot of conversation with his teammates, especially when he couldn't travel, and the fact that they reached out to him has meant a lot. We, what's great about technology these days is that you, you have that. You can keep in touch with uh, you know, family and, and, and teammates from, from afar, but also you know, we have the group texts that are just you know, kind of us all roasting each other, which is pretty fun. Jim, what does it mean to a teammate when the guys are saying, hey, we still love you, we want you here, and, and with social media now, Instagram, whatever, they can keep him engaged. Well, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's rehab motivation. It is inspiring to know that the guys still care about you because this is the time of year that he has been striving for, and he's going to miss it, at least the physical part of it. And so he's had to make a psychological adjustment as to how he wants to be a part of this team. And the, and the team has not compromised that. And as you guys mentioned, they've stayed in touch with it. So many amazing matchups in this series. I don't know where you start, but obviously point guard, Steph Curry, Kyrie Irving. We don't know what kind of uh, percentage Kyrie will be at. But what do you think, Joe, that Kyrie has to do at least to try to minimize this uh, juggernaut known as Steph Curry? Well, I mean, I think one big thing is going to be making him have to work on the defensive end. Uh, you know, he went against Jason Terry with uh, with Houston, and Kyrie's another animal compared to to him. So I think uh, a big thing is we're going to make him work. I think they're going to they're going to throw a lot of bodies. I think it's going to be a lot of committee against Steph Curry on the offensive end. And I think uh, when he's on the defensive end, just have to make him work. Really have to work uh, to guard Kyrie. You know, Josie, Steph Curry is 12 out of 13 on that left corner three ball. How do you, it seems simpler than it is to stay attached. People say, well, you don't, don't leave him. But how hard is that to stay attached? Well, it's a, it's a shorter shot. You know, the, the corner threes are shorter than anywhere on the floor to shoot. And you have boundaries. You, you've got the side and you've got the baseline. So as far as getting your feet set, you know where you are already. Right. So it, it, it tends to be a quicker release because all you got to do is get your feet under you. And it's just like shooting a free throw because it is shorter. You know, it's not as demanding as the top of the key or the long wing shot that a lot of these guys take. But uh, he's a load. You know, he, he made me a believer in the Memphis series that he is an outstanding player. You know, I don't know if he's well deserving of MVP because my MVP is always going to be LeBron James. And I don't know why you should have to apologize for being the best player in the league. And that's that's the mentality that I that, you know that I have about it. Or apologizing for voting for him as I did because uh, I've watched him on a daily basis. But uh, in terms of guarding Steph Curry, he'll get looks from Kyrie Irving, Iman Shumpert, J.R. Smith at, from time to time, LeBron James, and uh, Shump says he's ready to guard whoever he has to. All right, we do all things just you know try and keep him uncomfortable, uh, play my angles, and. Um you know, make sure I, I use my team around me. Uh, that's the best thing about uh, playing with this team is uh, I never feel alone when guarding somebody on an island. Uh, I always got people communicating with me. I got somewhere to send them. The way the Cavs defended the three-point line against a very good shooting Atlanta team, holding them well below 30%. Do you think they found something defensively at the, at the three-point arc that maybe can apply this series? Yeah, I mean, and during the season, I, you know, it was something that they kind of struggled with defensively. But boy, they have yeah. found, a, uh, you know, if it's possible to find a defensive rhythm, they have done it. And uh, I mean, I think the big part, they started with Corver. They denied him the ball from the early on in the Atlanta series, and they've just kind of carried over from there. 
it's a half ball denial. They're running guys off the arc. I mean, really, it's just uh, they, they've totally sharpened their three-point defense. What has stuck out for you in defending the three? Because it's easier said than done. Well, I, I think the main thing is the new three. You know, when you look at Mozgov and you look at Iman Shumpert and Timothy Mozgov, uh, but JR, sorry, JR, and uh, you put those three guys on the floor, we become overnight athletic. And then we've changed our defense philosophy after the All-Star game. And what's happened now is we're forcing teams to one side of the floor. I'm not going to give away all the game plan, but we're so athletic as far as going to help and then recovering. And they're making guys, they're running them off to three, but they're not letting them get to the paint. Now, every once in a while, a guard will drive. Teague had an outstanding game. Uh, Derrick Rose had a couple. But when it came to shutting them down at crucial points in the game, Iman Shumpert was on the floor, and so was Della Vadova. Yeah, for sure. All right, LeBron James obviously has not been shooting the ball outside as well as he would like, but still putting up phenomenal numbers in the postseason. But he says he's going back to the lab a little bit, working on his J. I'm going to do a lot of shooting. Uh, this week to kind of get my shot back on point. Um, you know, where I was kind of missing in the last uh, last round. Um, so be able to get my body feeling better and, uh, and work my game and get ready for next week. Jimmy, any doubt in your mind? I, I, that's my prediction for the series, that LeBron James is going to find that stroke because it's still pure. It's just been off a little bit, but I don't think there's any doubt he's going to find it. Well, he's doing a lot. You know, and uh, probably out of all the activity they do, scoring, rebounding, defending, maintaining the, the up-tempo pace, you know, you get a little fatigued. But the other point is that he has to take those shots, win or make or miss, because what it does, it, it doesn't afford the defense an opportunity to fall back and protect the paint, which they're going to try to do anyway, and most teams do fundamentally. So with the threat of him taking that shot thins things out a little bit. He's been taking the shot, and in spite of a poor percentage, we've been winning games. So it is crucial that he take the shot. And obviously he's going to get a look at Iguodala, mm -hmm. Draymond Green, mm -hmm. Harrison Barnes, maybe Sean Livingston. Yeah. But there's nothing he hasn't seen, like he says. Well, I mean, he's seen every every type of defense. He's seen every type of defender. There's uh, there's nothing he hasn't seen. And I like to kind of go with what Jim said. Well, when LeBron talked about Kyrie playing against Chicago, he said if he just has the name on the back of his jersey, that's enough out there. LeBron has to shoot those shots because he has to keep them honest out there. And without Kevin Love, you know, stretching your defense, he has to shoot those shots. And I'm with you, Fred. I, I believe, you know, we've seen him out here working extra, extra long after practice. So I, I got to believe those are going to start falling. And of course, another key element will be at the power forward spots, including double T. Guarded by a smaller Bazemore, spins baseline, goes to the hole, puts it up. No, Thompson, no, the follow. Going to J.R. Smith, right side. Elliot to Thompson, and Thompson gets it home, and the Cavaliers have taken a 20-point lead. That's the one matchup that I can't wait to watch. Two guys with tremendous motors, Draymond Green, Tristan Thompson. Who wins that battle? Well, I think Tristan will because I think Tristan is a better uh, defensive and offensive rebound. Overall, Tristan is a better offensive rebounder. I think Tristan is a better physical player on the front line. Uh, Draymond may be quicker out front because of his mobility, but he's not as physical as Tristan. And I think physicality plays a part in winning championships. The other thing is that... Uh, uh, Draymond maybe can play one more position than Tristan, mm -hmm. and you know, defensively, you know, he can he can guard anybody on the floor, but Tristan can guard four positions, and Tristan I think is still our best post defender. I think he does a fantastic job of guarding bigger players and moving with them and forcing them to take tough shots. But Tristan Thompson has come into his own in this playoffs, and he's he's relaxed, and when we go small and he switches from a power forward to a center, you know, we get a lot of things done defensively. Those guys, are, I mean, they're going to be, Tristan will get off the bus and Draymond Green's probably going to be there waiting for him. Yeah, I mean, and they, and they you know, very similar styles, uh, very high motor guys, yeah. things like that. But uh, I just think that what, what separate, actually they both are very, uh, versatile, but I think that's what separates Tristan and that he can guard, you know, four positions uh, pretty well. And I just feel his confidence, and he's greedy right now. He just wants every ball that goes up. So uh, he's a greedy rebounder, and that's, that's what you want. All right, I'm greedy here, too. I, I want to know what you guys are predicting for the finals. Give me a who and how many games. Joe? I like the Cavs in six. I think we're going to come back here and win it, and the town's going to explode. Yeah, I can't say. You know, I don't know. I, I, 
I, I really don't know, and I, I don't even have a premise for basing that on. But I just think that uh, if it takes seven, it takes seven. But but I don't want to say. You know, I just want us to go out there, and at the end of every game, I want the Cavs to position themselves in such a way that they give themselves a chance to win. And that's all you can ask. This is going to be a fun series. It's going to be a non-traditional series. You're going to see a lot of small players playing bigger than their physical size. It's going to be a lot, a lot of transition, a lot of quickness, and some great shooting. And uh, I just think the Cavs are going to come out on top. See, that's why he's so tough to guard. When you expect him to go left, he would go right. When you expect him to post up, he'd step back and shoot the J. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. I'm, I'm taking Cavs in six as well, and I'm feeling a little bit of that Buckeye karma. Similar kind of story, defying the odds with injuries, and proving that uh, they're the best at the end. And yes, you're exactly right. This town will uh, go ballistic like we've never seen before. For Jim and Joe, I'm Fred. Thanks for clicking on Cavs.com. Go Cavs.